What's up guys, my name is Becky and this is Chris and we have a joint YouTube channel together called Becky and Chris, it's not the most creative name. Today I'm gonna to walk you guys through all the settings in Adobe Premiere Pro or at least the ones that I think are the most important, including autosave. Autosave is the most important. We're gonna to have to watch my video and find out. Okay, so in today's video, I'm gonna run through some of the settings that are available to you in Adobe Premiere Pro. Most of these settings are pretty good to go out of the box. You can use the program as is, but there are some that I think are important to know about. So the first thing to cover is getting into the preferences dialog box. You do that by selecting the edit menu, going down to preferences, and then selecting any of these here, which then all show up in a list on the left-hand tab there. So we're gonna start with general. And general, actually, all of these things are pretty much good in, the, in their default settings, so I leave that as is. Next, we can go down to appearance. You can change how bright or dark the interface is. Sort of the audio tab, I like to make sure that play audio while scrubbing is checked. That allows me to really rapidly pinpoint highlights in a song, like beats or drum hits or something that I wanna time and edit to. I also leave automatic waveform generation checked. That'll basically tell Premiere Pro to automatically create waveforms in the audio track and the timeline. Again, it's also very easy to see visually where the beats and hits in the songs are so you can rapidly time things to it. The final thing under the audio tab that I make sure is set is maintain pitch while shuttling. That's useful because nobody likes to hear chipmunks when they're shuttling back and forth in their timeline, especially when you've learned how to use those keyboard commands. Oh, you haven't done that yet? Well, make sure to check out our keyboard commands video, which is in this playlist. Next tab is audio hardware. Everything in this section is pretty much good to go. I will draw your attention to default output. If you're using something like headphones or speakers, you may have to select them in this dialog box. Next up is auto save. Trusty, trusty auto save. Now this is all personal preference, but I tend to save every five minutes and I keep a maximum project number of of 120. So why did I choose 120? It's really just because I thought, hey, I wanna be able to go back 10 hours and revert to a project within that window. In my opinion, hard drive space is cheap. Your time is not, so just be generous here. So the next few tabs look great out of the box. That's where we're gonna skip down to the media tab. So in the media tab, the first thing I wanna make sure that is set correctly is the indeterminate media time base. And for me, that's 23.976 frames per second, because that's what the media is in most of the projects that I'm working on. If you're confused a little bit about what frame rate to use for your projects, we made a video about that on our YouTube channel, Becky and Chris. So the other setting I wanna draw your attention to in the media tab is the enable hardware accelerator decoding. This is arguably one of the most important features in this section uh, as it will offload a lot of the work from your CPU to your GPU, AKA your graphics card. And the final thing I wanna talk about in this section is the default media scaling. And make sure that's set to set to frame size. So this is important because Premiere Pro will now automatically scale clips to fit my timeline. So for example, if I have a 4K clip and I drop it into a lower resolution timeline that's 1080p, it'll automatically scale that clip down. So we're gonna skip down to the timeline setting here now. So the first thing I wanna draw your attention to is the still image default duration. This is a very useful setting because let's say you wanted to make a slideshow where each image was up on the screen for three seconds. All you have to do is make sure that your still image default duration is set to three seconds. Then when you import your photos into Premiere Pro, they'll automatically have that duration. Then it's just a matter of dropping them into the timeline and boom, you're done. Looking at timeline playback auto scrolling options, I like to choose page scroll. Again, this is a personal preference. I think it gives you the most benefit because it allows you to automatically move with your playhead but it doesn't have constant movement like the smooth scrolling option does. Okay, so the final project settings I wanna cover are in a separate dialog box under project settings. So the important thing on this dialog is to make sure renderer is set to GPU acceleration and not software only. This is basically make sure that your GPU or your graphics card is gonna be doing most of the heavy lifting. So we can jump over to the scratch disks tab here, and this basically tells Premiere Pro where you want it to store various media. Traditionally, I've always stored my media on a separate drive from my operating system just for optimal performance. But again, if you're using a laptop like here, you really might not have any other options. In the next video, I'm gonna be showing you guys how to use the effect controls panel to change your clip size, position, and speed.